How are we doing? Long time no see. Now, as you all know, I do like a bit of venison. One thing I've been wanting to do for a long, long time is to process a deer using only my everyday carry Swiss Army knife. So uh, we're gonna give it a bash. I'm gonna speed up the video as in like time lapse it because I'm not a butcher, it does take me a while. Um, and it has been a while since I've processed the deer. So Swiss Army knife, deer process, here we go. So if this was hung up, hung up by the, uh, the tendons there, upside down, you can just put a lot of weight on this and pull down it and it'll just slip off really easily. Um, do it this way, you don't have priority on each side. It's entirely possible. Uh, and even if I was doing it out, outdoors, which where I'm currently located, I know there are people that wouldn't take too kindly to that. So. Unfortunately, I'm resorted to doing it in this cold room. Um, you may be able to hear that whirring noise. That's the, the air cold blowing in, keeping it in the cold. So, if you're not picking up my voice, then I do apologise. I'll uh, try and find somewhere else next time. So that is the hide removed. So this animal is now, for all intents and purposes, skin. It's a very clean hide, I'm very happy with this. Uh, there's a bit around the neck area where it took the, uh, the, the all important shot of massive exit wounds. Um, so that will be trimmed out, but. That there is a lovely, lovely hide. It's often a lot of meat on the inside that you have to scrape off. As you can see, absolutely none. So I'm super happy with that. Uh, nice colour as well. Nice summer road book. Um, so that will make a lovely processed hide when that's squared away put to bed. Right, I am going to pause the video I'm just going to wash my hands because there's a lot of bacteria in this hide um, which we don't want getting on our meat. So I'm going to pause it briefly, go wash my hands, give this a wipe down and I will continue processing using only my Swiss Army knife. The fur or the skin. Um, there's a few hairs left on the meat which probably happened in transit or you know, it's very hard to not let the fur touch the meat at all. Um, so I'm just going to put them off and put them in the bin as, as we go. So I'm going to start with a couple of the bigger joints, so like shoulders, the haunch. Um, I'll probably, I may just leave that as a whole leg. It's, it's not a huge animal. Uh, we might see if we're going to take the, uh, the shanks off and the hocks off the, uh, the front there. And then we'll, we'll get rid of the, the flanks um, we'll get the back straps out, maybe see if we can get through the neck 
um, to do the to process that down as a joint. Um, and then what we'll probably do after that is just go through the ribs and everywhere else and just get any trim left over because that's really great for burgers and the likes. Um, and uh, we'll see what meat we're left with at the end. So what I'm also probably going to do is just, just get rid of this tallow so all the fat that's inside there. Um, it's not as nice as beef fat and also you can utilise that to make things like candles. So uh, I'll put that to one side and then we'll, uh, we'll process, process that down further on a different day. Uh, and see what we can make from the tallow. So to start off then, I'm just going to essentially follow, so you, I don't know if you can pick that up, but all down there, that's that's the line of the where the muscles go. What I'm not going to do, or what I'm not going to try to do, or what I'm going to try not to do, is cut through um, a, a muscle itself or a muscle group. Uh, a lot of the time, you can just separate the muscles with your fingers. You don't even need a knife. Um, but there are going to be some points where I normally use a saw, uh, specifically through the spine uh, and at the top by the, the shoulders there, where the back straps uh, start at the top. And I'll, I'll normally use a saw. Um, I've got a saw on this, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I may just use brute force, cut through the ligaments in between the bones, and then use a bit of brute force to break through um, like the spine, etc. So it may get a little bit gruesome. Um, but you know, if you started watching this video, then you should be aware that, uh, that it's, it's going to get a little bit gory. We're processing the deer at the end of the day, that's the food. Cool, so. There we go. One leg. Easy as that. So that's fairly big. Probably not going to get that in a pot. So I will probably um, separate that off. Get rid of some of this uh, dreadful looking membrane. Um, and then I'll separate that. Those two parts out. All that is just chewy, horrible, you call it silver skin, I think, uh, membrane, whatever you want to call it. Decent bit of meat on there. It's not. It's not going to feed a family of five. But uh, for one person, especially if it's like a survival situation, even that there, that's probably to get that many calories for one day is really good going. So if well, you've got this whole deer in a survival situation, you'd be laughing. Yeah, so, just gonna bag this up, keep it nice and clean. That's a shank in the bag and a punch, essentially the thigh. I think it's going to fit. <laughs> At Little UK, you need to sell bigger bags. But the supermarkets are available. Okay, there we go, there's a hunch. And I mean, 
And now I'm essentially just going to do the exact same on the other side. Won't talk through it, I'll just get on with it as fast as I can. And then we'll move on to uh, probably the shoulders and then, uh, and then on with there. Launches to shanks. Next, we move on to the shoulders. <coughs> so the shoulders are not attached by bone or joints as such. They're just literally held on by by ligaments. Um, so all we're going to do, similar to before, just trace around the uh, large muscle. <laughs> No bones or anything, just there we go. Uh, and what we can do as well is separate the hock. With all these uh, these cuts here, they do a lot of work. If it works a lot, we need to cook it slow. Right? Um, things like the uh, the loin or the back strap, which we'll come on to in a little while, it doesn't do as much work. So it's, uh, it's best used for like steaks and things. Quick cook, sort of a good. Um, these hard working joints. You definitely need to cook them nice and low and slow uh, in a stew or uh, roasting on a low heat in the oven, etc. Um, for a good couple of hours, I'll do it. The shoulder and a hock in there, and I'll do the same again on the other side. Again, I won't go off this time. Flanks or so not much of all oh, meat. And dip some grisly bits. Now what I could do is just pass that through the uh, mincer. And now I'll go for burgers and the likes. You can see that, that is absolutely full of just gristle and just toughness. Um, so I'm not overly fussed about keeping it. If you've got a dog that eats raw, then obviously you do. So I mean, absolutely.
Good. Um, so normally, oh, there we go. Normally, saw through all of that um, so I can lay the, uh, the back of the animal out flat and then get access to the back strap. Um, but I may be able to get away with it. And do this way. So, the danger of what, what this, what we're doing now is that there could be fragments of bone in there, but I'm not overly fussed about that because I'll, I'll know about it and I can mitigate anything dealing to much in Very, uh, the neck that's took a right old wallop. Get rid of that. Not quite as good as the first one, but that's it. Do the job. And you can see I can, I've got real good access to the, uh, the back straps now. So, what I'm essentially going to do is start at the base of the neck. I'm going to cut across there just to give me a line to start off on. And then I'm going to follow the spine as close as I physically can, right down to the base of the top of the ribs, and get the uh, back strap or the loin all the way down. This is one of the more intricate jobs that I'm going to do this time around. Um, because this is such an amazing cut of meat, I want it to be, uh, I want to save as much of it as possible, get as much of it out of the can. Strap. You can see there is the uh, membrane on there. It's very difficult to um, not get it on there without slicing the meat. So all I'm going to do is just take a knife and skim that away. Um, before I do that, I'm just going to get to the other side. So, onto the inside, we're going to do essentially the same again, but on the inside. Pretty much the deer done. I'm just going to try and recover some of this neck meat because it's really, really good in stews. Um, and then we'll just split them ribs down, get all the trim out of those. They're not great to do as as ribs, but uh, slice all, finally cut all the meat out of those, and then uh, 
They're pretty good for in the stew and stuff. Okay, so I've just moved the camera because uh, I was going on for talking for about another five minutes and then realised that um, my phone had reached the capacity for each video that it takes, it, it gets to a limit of, of how much data it will store for that one video. So uh, luckily I didn't do any more work, I've just done the uh, tenderloins um, and all I did was talk about what was left. So. Uh, and I, I snapped a piece of the, the, the spine off um, just to show you what, you know, that, that there would be a... We've got uh, two um, shanks, two hocks, two haunches, two shoulders, a load of ribs, which I'm just going to cut in between using my knife in a moment. And um, just put all that into the trim bag, uh, which is the last thing to, to look at. Big bag of trim, uh, which will be near enough full once I've finished the, uh, the ribs there. And then two tenderloins, which are the best cuts. And then one lovely back strap there, which I'll, I'll trim all that uh, silver skin off. The, uh, the ligament type stuff and um, another that I hacked into when I was doing the ribs um, which I'll also trim the the, uh, skin, the silver skin membrane off afterwards in fact let's have a look at it Kilo bag of trim there. That's all, and like all the, the flanks and just all the bits. Um, that's good for dicing up and banging in the stew, low and slow, uh, or bang for a mincer for your burgers, sausages, etc. Um, big pile of bones for a, a raw fed dog, which I'll probably stick up on the internet for, for free. Uh, and then a bag of tallow there and it'll turn into a, some sort of a primitive or ancestral um, lamp of some description um, a bit more tallow there I'll, I'll rip that off in a bit um, but yeah loads of meat loads of bones uh, also if you, don't, if you don't know anyone who raw feeds their dog you can you can bang this in a stock pot, um, boil it up for 
overnight ideally with a bit of peppercorns and carrots and celery and um, whatever else, juniper berries, something like that. Um, and then make yourself some nice venison stock um, as a base for a gravy or a base for a stew or your venison stew, whatever. So thank you for watching. Um, questions or comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, and then, yeah, see you next time. Cheers.